Hello students, welcome you all to the oscillation series lecture number 3 of our YouTube channel. In previous video, we discussed about the damped harmonic oscillation, what are the different subcases of damped harmonic oscillation, we derived the wave equation. So today we, will, we are going to discuss about the energy decay because we know that in damped harmonic oscillation energy gradually decreases with time. So now we are going to mathematically prove that and we will discuss about the relaxation time as well as the quality factor. So let's start this one. So here already we know that the solution of damped harmonic oscillation equation is y equal to a naught e to the power minus rt sin omega t plus phi. This is a solution we already know. So, where a naught is a constant we already discussed, r already we know that the damping constant, omega is the frequency and phi is the phase difference. At initial point when at t equal to 0, phi is always 0. So, if phi is 0, then you can write down y equal to a naught e to the power minus rt then sin omega t. This is the expression we get for the displacement. Again, we can also calculate velocity, which is nothing but the rate of change of displacement. So, rate of change of displacement d by dt of displacement is here a naught e to the power minus rt sin omega t. This is the derivative of y. Now, since you can see here, we have two different term of t. This is also depend upon t. This also depends upon t. So, we will use the u into v formula for calculating the differentiation or derivative. As a naught is constant, a naught remains constant. e to the power minus rt, let's make that as constant. So, u into v formula, if u and v, if u remains constant, we have to find out derivative of v. So, sin omega t derivative is omega cos omega t, then plus. Now, a naught is again constant. Now, we have to find out derivative of u keeping v constant. So, derivative u will be minus rt minus r sin omega t is there. Sin omega t remains constant. So, this is the derivative part. Now, we will simplify that. So, velocity equal to a naught the faster omega e to the minus rt cos omega t minus the second term a naught e to the minus rt r sin omega t. But here always we can see in under damped condition omega is always greater than equal to r. Omega is always greater than r. So, r is a very small quantity. So, again we have in the second term you can see we have the trigonometric function sin omega t. Trigonometric functions vary from minus 1 to plus 1. So, it is a small quantity. If we multiply another small quantity r, then this the second term will be a very small quantity. So, we can neglect this second term when the condition is omega is greater than or equal to r or you can say r is less than or equal to omega. So, the final formula will get v equal to a naught omega e to the power minus rt cos omega t. This is our equation number 2. So, from equation 1 you can see we get the displacement, from equation 2 we get the expression for velocity. Now our, now, now our work is to find out the expression for energy. So, as we are going to calculate mechanical energy, I hope you all remember that mechanical energy is nothing but the sum total of kinetic energy and potential energy. So, we can write total energy equal to kinetic plus potential. So, kinetic energy we can easily calculate kinetic equal to half m v square. Already we have the expression for v. Now, we can use direct formula for v here. From equation number 2, we can directly use half m v square means a naught square omega square e to the power minus 2 rt then cos square omega t. Kinetic energy kinetic energy equal to half. See here, in place of m and omega square, we can directly write k. So, this will be half k a naught square e to the power minus 2 rt. Half k a naught square e to the power minus 2 rt. And you can see the trigonometry function is there. The cos omega t is there. So, we can directly write. So, cos square omega t. So, where k equal to m omega square. 
Now our aim is to calculate potential. So there are different types of potential energy, gravitational potential energy, electrostatic potential energy and elastic or spring potential energy. In oscillation case, since it is elastic vibration, so we have to use that formula which is equal to half k y square. So half k y formula already we have here from equation 1 we have y equal to a naught e to the power minus r t sin omega t then it's square a naught square e to the power minus r t square will be 2 r t and here you can see sin omega t was there sin omega t so its square will be sin square omega t sin square omega t now we get the expression for kinetic energy as well as the expression for potential energy so total energy as we discussed is nothing but sum total of kinetic and potential we have to just add so kinetic energy is nothing but half k a naught square e to the minus 2 rt cos square omega t plus potential energy is half k a naught square e to the minus 2 rt sin square omega t here you can take common so you can take common e equal to half k a naught square e to the minus 2 rt if we take common in bracket we will have from the first part we will have cos square omega t from the second part we will have sin square omega t cos square omega t plus sin square omega t so cos square theta plus sin square theta as you know that is 1 so our result will be energy is equal to half k a naught square e to the minus 2 rt so here we can see energy is proportional to e to the power minus 2 rt so it is exponentially decreasing with time so if you plot a graph then the energy will be like this if we take energy along y axis and time or omega t also you can say along x axis then you can see there will be exponential decrease of energy in case of damped vibration due to the presence of damping force or at t equal to 0 if you put the energy will be half k then a naught square and e to the power minus 2 rt if you put 0 e to the power 0 is 1 so this will be the energy at first or t equal to 0 time so when time increases due to the presence of the damping force the energy gradually decreases clear then we have two different terms one is relaxation time another one is quality factor so first we will discuss about the relaxation time so relaxation time means is the time in which the energy of the body which is vibrating under damp motion decreases to 1 by e parts 1 by e parts of its original value e means here exponent number so just like you remember the mean life this is also said to be the mean life or the time constant so relaxation time is nothing but the time in which the number of particles are here you can see the number of energy energy means here the total energy which is set with the mechanical energy decreases to 1 by e parts of its original value so its symbol is tau and it is written as 1 by r as you know that b by m equal to 2r so r will be b by 2m and 1 by r will be 2m by b similarly another term is that which is set with the quality factor quality factor measures how rapidly that means the rate the rate of decrease of the energy so it measures the rate of decrease of the energy it is calculated by the formula or you can say the ratio of how much energy is stored for in per cycle divided by how much energy is lost or decay per cycle and its formula is always omega divided by 2 r when quality factor will be high that means it is taking more time to decrease so the less energy will loss or the rate will be less so when quality factor time or q value will be less that means it is taking less time to decrease the energy that so hope you understand this in next video we will discuss about forced vibration the wave equation of forced vibration and different parameters and different forces involved in forced vibration so if you like the video or the content then do like share and subscribe for more such physics videos. Thank you.